Our guest is Arvind Ganesan, the head of global energy and environmental policy at Apple. Arvin formerly serves as the vice president for federal policy at the Advanced Energy Economy. And before that, he was deputy chief of staff at the Environmental Protection Agency. Arvin, thanks for joining us today. What you like better? You like being in government or the private sector? They both have their uh, they both have their ups and their downs, but they both have been really fantastic and a great place to uh, to work on making the world a better place. So, Arvin, thanks for ask, having me. No, absolutely, my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this. Um, let me ask you. You know, we're kind of saying, hey, uh, IT and tech can help save the world, can help save the planet. Um, Perhaps. But what has to be right to do that? What has to be right to achieve it? And is Apple do anything unique along those lines that you can share? Well, thank, thanks for the question. Yeah, you know, we're very proud of, of what we're doing. We will be carbon neutral by 2030 across all the scopes of our emissions, ranging from um, the, the operations, how you send iMessages, all the way to the manufacturing of those products. I think our general approach is in order to have the biggest impact, you need to address the emissions where they are. So we spend a lot of time in the design of our products, um, reducing the greenhouse gas impact of the product themselves. So, for example, um, for, uh, we now sell four products of 100% recycled aluminum enclosure, and making that chemistry work has singularly reduced the greenhouse gas, gas footprint of those products by 60%. So the basic idea is do as much as you can right where the emissions are happening throughout all of the different stages of your product from beginning to end. And that approach is going to get us to carbon neutral by 2030. And I think most importantly, we're hoping that that kind of in, in product approach will set an example and will help governments kind of understand that innovation and big things are possible and to go bold with policy. No, no, Arvin, we just, I don't know if you saw any of the earlier panel, but we had, uh, Friends from Siemens, Schneider Electric, Intel, I can count dozens of other, you know, big firms that sprawl, I mean, just, just all over the world that are, um, each have their own uh, climate program, their own environmental sustainability program. What, what do you think the community of big players in there, what would help them achieve a greater impact on climate results than is the case today? Yeah, I think one thing that drives how we make decisions at Apple is this idea of a ripple in a pond, right? Decisions that one company makes can really spill out and help others. And that's fundamental to how we think about our own decisions. So we have a, we have a program to, uh, to get our suppliers, our manufacturers powered by clean energy. And we spend a lot of time both educating them, working with them, sharing our experience as a corporate off taker to get them to go to go 100% renewable themselves. So the, to answer your question, everything that a company should do should be in the terms of how is that creating a ripple in the pond for the others? We had a, a question, let me get it here. I just want to throw it in the mix here. Uh, and the, the question is from Moses Boone, the founder of Dot Echo. Is there a place for small businesses to help? We've been talking about big businesses, but how can, when you talk about ripple in pond, you know, I also think about large enterprises, but also small enterprises, particularly in the United States, is half of employment in America, half the job uh, in America in that area. So do you see partnership opportunities there? Absolutely. Uh, Apple first has uh, suppliers that run the, run, run the gamut, and we work um, very diligently to work with small businesses, work with other suppliers to help us develop great products. And, of course, um, uh, we, 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 like I said, we spend significant amount of time with our supply chain, um, educating them and working with them on how they can also green their operations. So we don't see this as something we can do alone, but it's a partnership with our suppliers and everybody else in the ecosystem. Do you think our steps forward on environmental issues are, I don't know how to put this, secure? I mean, we have a global problem, right? Apple is a global experience. You have assets in China, assets in America. China is, looks at this as, an, as I was discussing with the Congress, as an area of you know, almost national security, big investment. We heard uh, uh, the leader of China speak at the World Economic Forum uh, earlier this week about exactly these issues on climate, multilateralism. And I guess, you know, do, do you feel like the movement now with what the Biden administration is doing, what you see around the world and inside your own company, is, is, is getting us into a better place. And I, I just wonder sometimes, is all of this going to get us to where we need to be? 
Well, we need bold action from governments. We're pretty heartened to see the Biden administration take the steps that they did, including uh, efforts to rejoin Paris. Tim Cook has spoken out numerous times on the need for an international approach to climate, including um, recently at a UN summit. Um, so, you know, I would say that the fundamental thing is you need bold action from governments, but also the unit economics and the fundamentals of the clean energy economy are in our favor. Um, so if you can combine just the market trends associated with clean energy um, with other uh, clean designed products, combined with a stable environment that looks at climate as a crisis that it is, we think that great things can happen. And we as a globe can be on track to being where we need to be to avoid the worst elements of climate change. You answer all my questions all so well. I'm trying to find something that will trip you up. Uh, <laughs> we can talk about the Red Sox if you want. <laughs> I mean, I only know about sumo, so that's a problem. But but um, <laughs> let me let me discuss. You know, I went into the the a Apple's 2020 environment report, and there's a lot of incredible detail in here. You know, looking at green bonds, renewable electricity commitments, recycled earth elements in the iPhone, and how you recycled them, reduction on emissions, on and on. You know, uh, uh, looking at, at at various awards on climate neutrality. It's a very complex picture you have. And I guess the question I have is what enables, I mean, I know Apple can do anything. I'm, you know, have Apple, but, but what enables gravity to change inside a company? That its ability to sense what it's doing, to have the feedback come in. I know the answer is partly technology, but, but it's a lot of different moving pieces. I mean, how do you get yeah. gravity to go that way so that it feels natural and it profitable and sustainable? Because, you know, a lot of us don't talk about the fact if you create sustainability tracks that are yeah. unprofitable, guess what? That's not going to work. So so how do yeah. you marry sustainability to profitability to being around to delivering, you know, products? And I know that that's a big meta question, um, but I think it's a really important one because we can't just issue diktats that we're going to uh, do this without kind of looking at, OK, how do you also keep people employed and how do you keep economies moving? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's kind of at the heart of everything, right? I think that the first thing I would say is is leadership actually matters. Uh, Tim, and this didn't happen overnight. Tim Cook has been um, an eager participant in addressing climate change. He, we just spoke to the UN in December at the UN Climate Ambition Summit, and he gave a keynote where he said, the choice between the bottom line and the future of our planet is a false one. And each new green innovation offers that proof. So between Tim Cook and uh, the head of global sustainability and government affairs is Lisa Jackson, former EPA administrator. Uh, the leadership sets the tone. From the leadership on down, um, there are experts in all parts of the company that understand where the rubber meets the road from a technical perspective, whether that's product design, whether that's getting the most in working with our suppliers, whether it's working with customers. Um, there are There's huge talent and talent that succeeds in great companies is talent that's super innovative. So if you can send a signal from the top, like happens at, like it happens at Apple, uh, it really kind of motivates the, uh, the innovation spirit of people who inhabit the great companies in the world. And that's the thing that drives me the most. So many companies, uh, especially Apple, are so motivated to do our part on climate, it motivates our employees and it gets us the ability to attract the best talent. So it starts at the top, and then it unleashes the innovation everywhere through the company. Um, Arvin, we're taking questions from the audience, and I've got a sort of a long one here, but I, I want to uh, be square with our audience to send in good questions. This is from Tim Ogburn. He's the former manager of the California Environmental Technology Export Program in the California EPA, so you know, perhaps a neighbor of, of Apple and Cupertino. I managed the Environmental Technology Export Program for the state of California in the 2000s, he writes. We organized environmental technology business trade missions and reverse trade missions to help solve environmental issues in developing countries and to grow the environmental technology industry and create jobs in California. Do you see a place for this approach expanded to a national level, including a virtual component as part of our overall strategy to build U.S. environmental technology and climate change sector, create jobs, and more importantly, reduce the carbon loading in the atmosphere? I found this a really good question because it addresses the parts of the world that may not have everything we have here, but it also looks at missions, and that gets into intentionality and into the purpose. And I know that you straddle, you've straddled different roles, but you know, how would you respond to Tim Ogren? 
It's a really good question. I don't have a direct great answer uh, for that question, which is kind of an existential question for how how, how we operate. Uh, our our goal is to foster innovation. It's to work with uh, with with communities around around the country and the world. We just announced a partnership uh, as part of our racial justice initiative uh, with with. Um, the, with the HBCU communities, uh, including one in Atlanta University Center, where we um, where we created a partnership to get more people involved in coding and other work that makes uh, that makes our products great. So clearly, in order to really make the ecosystem work and our community work, we need to make sure that we're doing outreach to to everyone, uh, and we need to have that be a robust platform. So. You know this racial justice and uh, racial equity and justice uh, initiative that Lisa Jackson heads up at EPA or at Apple, forgive me, uh, is really kind of making the investments to make those um, those programs really work. But it's a really good question, Arvin. You know, one last question here. Uh, you mentioned uh, about Tim Cook's leadership and his concern on these issues, and you know he did say uh, when the United States withdrew from the Paris Agreement in 2017, he said it was wrong for our planet. Um, the Glasgow summit is coming up next year. This is the next round of UN talks. Are you working on something secret that's really cool on this front that you can share with us and haven't shared with anyone else? <laughs> uh, there is nothing. I, there is nothing that's super cool that I can share with anyone else. But we are very aware of um, kind of the international work on climate, and we think it's just such a huge part of tackling this challenge as a globe. Uh, so we're we're very uh, eager to kind of continue the the work on on that on that effort. Well, Arvind Ganesan, head of global energy and environmental policy at Apple. I love your tweets. I love your wife's tweets. I can tell that you've got you know a kick in your step <laughs> on these issues. You know, I was telling somebody when I really enjoyed our conversation the other day. I said, you know, the best people in public policy, it's kind of like that William Faulkner novel when somebody said, how did you write all those novels? And he says, I couldn't help it. And you're one of these people that I know is like, you know, an obsessive compulsive about environmental policy and doing it. You couldn't help uh, but doing the things you're in there. So I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and views with us today. Thanks, Steve. Good to see you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of our program. A big thank you to the Information Technology Industry Council for its support of this series and all of you attendees for joining us for this discussion. For those of you who missed any of the conversations or want to watch them again and again and again, we're going to have the video up on our event site shortly. I'm Steve Clemens. Be well.